you'll witness things strange, unexpected, mysterious, but not to be denied. Join me now and take one step beyond. A hundred years ago, these woods were the site of a busy supply depot for the Union Army. Food, ammunition, medicine were all brought in by train and sent ahead by men and wagons to the front lines. It was far removed from the field of battle. And there was little occasion for the usual heroics of war. Loyalty, bravery, and sacrifice. There was little occasion, too, for a man to think about death. Except once. When death came to claim a victim under, shall we say, unusual circumstances. It all began in 1862. On a spring night, with a Confederate soldier named Jess Bradley. Hungry, Reb? Now, what do you know about that? You keep that dog under control or I'll kill him. He ain't gonna hurt you. That's right, he sure ain't. Get up. I've been waiting for you, Reb. You stole my supper last night and I got mighty hungry. But I figured you'd be around again. The Sarge is gonna be mighty glad to see you. Now, you just walk out in front of me real easy-like. Walk. All right, you ignorant hayfoot. Now, what are you going to do? Load the gunpowder on top of the sugar? Move them sacks of sugar in the front, put the gunpowder in the tail. Hey, Sarge, look what I got. Where'd you catch him? Well, I figured he'd get hungry again, so I just started cooking a rabbit and let him come to me. What's your name? Just Bradley. What outfit you with? I was with the Missouri Militia. Sergeant. Yes, sir. I want these wagons loaded and out of here by midnight. Who's this? We caught the straggler, sir. Tom, hush! Get that dog out. Well, you ain't taking him. Nobody's gonna hurt him. Not unless you bring it on. All right, Tom. You go along with him here. Do as he says. Colonel, what do we do with the rib? Send him the roller. Let them worry about feeding him. Put this rib on the wagon. Keep a good eye on it. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Bring him in here. All right, you heard what the colonel said. Move. All right. Come over here, boy. How long have you been around this camp? Just since last night. Didn't the Rebs teach you how to speak to an officer? No, sir. What's your rank? They never give me one. Were you ever mustered into the Confederate Army? I don't know that word. Did you ever take an oath? Did you ever sign any enlistment papers? My folks... They was over to Carthage and... Well... They died. I, I didn't have nobody left. So I got to feeling pretty bad. And then old Pap come marching through. General Sterling Price? Yes, sir. Old Pap come a marching through and... 
I, I just sort of went along. Why'd you stay around here? Price went south ten days ago. Well, I was sent out on a patrol, and I got lost. When I found my way back, the army was gone. Don't lie to me, boy. You're not making sense. You knew this was a Union camp. Why'd you keep hanging around? I was hungry. My dog was hungry. I figured to steal some food. There ain't no place else to get it. Captain, where is General Curtis camped? He should be in the Fayetteville by now. Captain, get me a special rider to go... Out of here tonight, say, around 10. Well, we're sending the regular dispatchers out tomorrow. No, this is special. Sir. Captain. Sir? Have you ever drawn up papers for a trial under the martial law code? No, sir. There's a book in my quarters. Bring it back when you come. Yes, sir. Boy, what do you know about the men who've been raiding our supply trains? Nothing. General Curtis thinks that you have a man holed up here who sends a message every time we send a wagon out. Oh, Pap, he don't need help like that. He's got men all along the road just, just, just waiting for a chance to bushwhack. You know, sometimes... Generals get peculiar ideas. And once they start thinking, they don't let go of it. Oh, yes, sir. I guess so. Pick up that paper. What for? Pick it up and put it in your pocket. Sergeant! Has this man been searched? No, sir. Search him! Empty your pockets on the table. Twenty-five April, sixteen kegs black powder, four light artillery caissons. That's a list of tomorrow's shipment. It don't belong to me. What was it doing in your pocket? Sergeant, put him under guard. We'll hold his trial tonight. What for? I stole food. That's all I done. Put him under heavy guard, Sergeant. It isn't every day we catch a spy. Take him out. Colonel? Colonel? I ain't no spy. And you know I ain't. You ain't. And that this act of espionage committed by a civilian in the time of war as an authorized representative of a hostile power is thereby classified as treason under martial law. And shall be punished as such. Do you have anything to say? No. As commanding officer, it's my duty to pass sentence upon you. You'll be confined until sunrise and shot to death by a firing squad. Guards take the prisoner away. This call is dismissed.
a dog with eyes like that one? Captain, you have work to do. I wanted the dispatch sent off to General Curtis within the hour. Captain, if you have anything to say, spit it out. I was just wondering. Isn't often you find a dumb brush runner with a pen and ink on him. Meaning what? Just doesn't seem to be any sense in killing a boy. Sergeant, where'd you tie that dog? Back of the tent area, sir. I'll see you in the morning, Captain. Captain. You'll take charge of the execution in the morning. Good night, Captain. What did he have anyway? If we'd sent him to prison camp, chances are he'd have got typhus and died. If we let him go, chances are he'd, he'd starve to death. If he did make his way back to General Price, chances are he'd get his head shot off. So. What's the difference? Tell Corporal Jenkins to be ready to ride in an hour. Yes, sir. When I was a kid, they used to say a howling dog meant somebody was going to die. First time in my life I'd be willing to bet on it. Corporal? Yes, sir. Give this man a blanket. There isn't enough blankets to go out as it is. I said get him a blanket and I'm a double. Yes, sir. Pick the wrong place to come to, soldier. Should have gone to the devil himself before you came here. I didn't even know where I was, Captain. Uh, you have any folks, son? I got a cousin with uh, General Beauregard someplace. Maybe over in Virginia. Would you, uh, would you like me to write him a letter? It only grieved him to know I was shot. They, uh, got my dog tied down someplace, huh? Yes. Oh, well, Tom, you know, he, um, uh, he don't like to be tied down. You know, Captain, him and me, we've been through a lot together, hmm. you know? Over to Wilson's Creek. My, that was a fierce one. That old tomboy, he, he was right by my side all the way. He, he wouldn't let nothing happen to me. No, sir. Tom sure don't like to be tied down. I'll uh, see that he's turned loose tomorrow. Oh, I, I'd be much obliged, Captain. Uh, uh, would you like something to eat? No, I... I reckon I'm not very hungry. Well, but if you could fetch a little something to Tom, I'll... Well, I'll, uh, I'll do whatever I can. Thank you, Captain.
Did you uh, send the dispatch to Curtis? Yes, sir. Have a drink, Captain. No. <laughs> I'd like to see his face when he gets it. I'd give a month's pay to see his face when he gets it. So you're feeling sorry for the boy, Captain? All right, so am I. I feel sorry for all the poor farmers that get in the way of our artillery. But this is war, Captain. People get killed. Yes, but uh, not like this. I'm asking you not to kill him, Colonel. I'm asking you to send him on to Rolla. Captain, we're going to kill this rebel to get ourselves off the hook. The general thinks we've been lax about the spies. So we're going to give him a spy, properly convicted and executed. And that will get the general off our backs for a while. So you'll do as you're told. And you'll keep your mouth shut about this. Do I make myself perfectly clear, Captain? Perfectly. Good night, Captain. I'm putting in for transfer tomorrow. You got a watch? No, I haven't. This was gift to my pa. You fix it so I can see my dog and I'll give it to you. I can't do that. It's a good watch. Oh, it isn't the watch. It's just that, well, one of the boys took him out on patrol. And they figured he'd need the exercise after he'd been tied up all night. Well, you take it anyway. Oh, I can't do that. No, 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 take it. And if you get a chance, see that my dog gets in with somebody that's going to treat him right. I'll sure do that. Sergeant, I never spied on you. I swear, I, I never done it.
Would you like a blindfold? Would it make it any easier for you, Captain? If you couldn't see my face? Sergeant, give this man a blindfold. Come, Tom. Oh. Ready? But you gotta get out of here. Tom, get out of here. They're fixing to shoot me. Tom, I don't want you hurt. Aim! Tom, get out. Captain, get my dog out of here. Tom, I, I, I don't want you hurt, Tom. Get out of here, will you? Please get out of here. Oh. As you were, man. What's the matter with him? He's out of his mind. Maybe I better get the colonel. No, there's no need for that. Captain, what's holding you up? He's out of his head, sir. What are you trying to pull? It's no trick, sir. Nobody can kill a man in his condition. I gave you an order, Captain. Carry it out. No, sir, I can't do it. I'll kneel your heart to the wall for this. Going to get hurt. Hey, Ready. You don't have to kill my dog! Tom! Get out of here! What are you trying to do to me? What are you standing there for? Kill him! The official report listed the cause of the colonel's death as brain fever. Most of the men who actually witnessed the incident were never quite sure really what did happen. But one man knew. Jess Bradley spent the rest of the war in a Union prison camp and never doubted, even for an instant, that loyalty sometimes can be a lot stronger than death. This week, and every week, we'll be bringing you the personal records of the rarest kind of human experience. Man's adventure in the world of the unknown. That mysterious psychic world beyond our five senses. This is your invitation to take with us that astonishing one step beyond. <laughs>